is your warm up for this morning. With an equation that fits these things. I'm going to show you them all. What about belts? Yes, I have no idea. I, they said don't test it, so it might go off. I don't know the answer to that question. It said common item, so. Water bottles might set it off, so belts might set it off. Zero idea. I'm concerned about all the pins I have on my book bag. So I have no idea. In anyway. Nope, not going too far. Okay. Here are all of your clues. So you need to think about our absolute value equations. It has to be absolute value. And think about these things. I'm going to give you five to ten ish minutes to come up with an equation that fits for all of these things. You can use your notes, you can use each other, draw on the desk, paper, whatever. When you think you have an equation that works for all these things, raise your hand and I'll come check it. Okay, your time starts now. From Luca, I think um, Alyssa, yours is similar to Luca's, uh, Ayana, and Test these three. Make sure they work. I saw that they work, but I want you all to see that they also Wait, work. Shouldn't all of them say equal five? So the solutions have to equal five. It doesn't have to equal five. Right? So the solutions have to be five and negative five. We'll figure that out once we solve all three. They have to have an absolute value. They all do. There has to be a two in it. They all do. There has to be subtraction in it. Oh, I missed that one. Which is why I was over here originally. So, I kind of had this one originally, but I said this wouldn't work because we would have to simplify it. But if we had <coughs> wrote it like this, then that would work. So, I'm forgetting about that. Alright, so if we were solving this, we would add 5. There's nothing else on the absolute value, so we can drop the absolute value, set it equal to positive and negative 10, divide both sides by 2. So we get that solution set of negative 5 and 5, so that one works. The way I had this before, whether you subtract this now or put it back over here and then subtract it, you would still get the... 2 on the outside, x equals 10, divide both sides by 2. Now there's nothing else outside of the absolute value, and you can set it equal to the solution set. So that would work. And then for this last one, we add a 2 to both sides. And then drop the absolute value, set it equal to a positive and negative version. And divide, we would get the solution. That's the five. Right? So I know that was a lot of thinking because you had to think about all the different parts, think about the solution, think about the where could I put these things. It has to somehow end up in a five. So now I'm thinking, okay. If I'm dividing, it has to go into five, or five has to go into it, and all these different things. So there's a lot of moving parts. But good job to those that got one. Some of you were close, some of you were just missing small parts, but good job. Okay. We'll have time to, like, start this next part, but not go too far in depth with it today. Okay.
said this class is? 24. Okay. So, in all of the things we've learned for this unit, we've talked about solving loops of equations, word problems, absolute value equations. The last thing we have to talk about is literal equations. So, first let's talk about these things. If I said, what's the difference between these two sentences? It's raining cats and dogs, and it's, it's literally raining cats and dogs. What's the difference? It's actually raining cats and dogs. Like, what, what's that mean? Um, no, what do you mean? You said it's actually raining cats and dogs. Like, give me an example. What, what's the difference? What does one of those mean? The second one is raining cats and dogs. Like there are actual yeah, cats and dogs falling from the sky. And then the first one? It's like, it's really exaggeration. Here are some more literal exaggeration slash actual implications. But when we talk about a literal equation in math, we're solving it like a normal problem. So that part is the actual. But then we solve the equation like a normal problem, but we don't get a numerical answer. That's where it's a little tricky, because we're just solving like a normal problem, but to get an answer that has letters in it or variables. We could put any amount of numbers in there to make it equal, but we will never know what those numbers are. So let's do a couple of these. Um, think about these helpful hints, so take a second, read through those. We're going to compare our literal equations to a regular equation. So if I had this regular equation, 2x equals 10, how would I solve for x? <coughs> Divide to both sides. Divide both sides by 2, x equals 5. Now, in example 2, we have a similar setup, but we're trying to get h by itself. So what do you think we do there? Oh, but there's no number there. There's no number. We will not have numbers in this. So we're going to divide both sides by g to get h by itself so that these g's cancel, just h would be left. m and g are not like terms, so they don't cancel, but you just rewrite it. It's going to be weird at first for a while all the time you solve these. Because you're solving an equation, but you're not getting a real answer. You're just getting a bunch of different letters. Wait, so what does this mean? Like, what is it? We're solving mm -hmm. to get a formula with mm -hmm. letters in it. That's really it. Right, let's try another one. Example three, we're solving for x. How do we get x by itself? Divide both sides by a. And example three. Oh, uh, we subtract both sides by five. So we have two x equals six. Now this is like example one, where we just divide both sides by two. We get a number. Example four has a similar setup, but it's now just letters. So we would subtract b, get rid of b because we're trying to get x by itself. Subtract that to the other side. But when we do that, C and B are not like terms, so we cannot combine them. We would just rewrite it. <laughs> and then divide by A. We're going to divide this entire side by A. 
If we had something like maybe we had an A on the side, we could divide separately and then simplify it, but we don't. So these A's cancel, we're just left with X equals C minus B all over N. Questions so far? And I'm going to do both of these. I'll let you choose one of them, five or six. Six. So let's say we're doing six, and we're trying to get y by itself. What do you think the first step would be? Divide. So if we were to divide by three, these two are going to simplify, sure. But this one is not going to end up with a fraction. In a word. You can't just divide one thing by three. You have to divide every single thing by three. Uh, so you have to divide negative six by three too? We would have to divide everything by three. So let's oh. not do that. So we'd have to add this entire term and we would just be adding it to the other side, which we could do, but it would create an extra step. Or do you have an idea? So same idea. So let's think about this. If we're trying to get y by itself, and negative six is connected to it, in any other problem where a number is connected to the variable, we save that for last. So maybe let's get rid of this entire term. How do you do that? Like, do we have like times two combined? Minus three. We can subtract. Yes, but we're going to subtract the entire thing. Can you rewrite this? And not just subtracting three, because we can't separate these unless we divide, but we can subtract the entire term over to the other side. Okay. These are not like terms again, so we would just rewrite. If you put that x term before the 17, that's also fine. Okay, you just took negative 3 and put it on the other side. You took 3x and put it on the other side and by subtracting. Oh. And then you divide by negative 6. Now we can divide by negative 6. And because this will simplify, we have to divide each thing separately. Where do you divide separately? Why? Yeah. Anytime you see something that can be simplified, you have to divide separately. So like if the negative like three like terms. if the negative three was a seven, that wouldn't simplify. So no, they're not like terms, but you can simplify the numbers. Okay, um, Other questions? I want you to try example what we just applied. It will be similar, but now you're trying to get x by itself. But you Y plus 17 over 3, that's also fine. For these, as long as you have it, if you have multiple variables over here, I'll have you put it in ABC order, but as long as you have it and you solve it correctly, it should be right. 
Great. We're going to stop there for today, finish 7 and 8 tomorrow, as well as do other problems.